And it's not up for discussion. It's not up for debate. It's not up for a negotiation. This is what it is. That is what I want. So that is what it's going to be. And that's it. The universe isn't giving things out like a prize or a gift, right? There's no one in the clouds that's like handing out raffle tickets. It takes money to make money, scared money, don't make no money. You don't know how to approach money and work with money as a boss. Why would money wanna work with you? I'm just saying, nice cars cost money. They are expensive. You have to pay for them. And if you are so worried about the car note payment that comes with the Toyota, how the hell are you gonna end up in a Range Rover? This channel it is your resident internet psychic medium and spiritual advisor, Mr. Crane. And today I got to talk to you about something. So listen, I want to talk about manifestation because the last time I properly touched on this was about 10,000 subscribers ago. And so I realized that some of you all that are joining us now have not actually heard me say this. And so I want to give you another perspective on manifesting why manifesting either has or has not worked for you and to give you a sort of different technique and a different take in order to manifest, right? We all have dealt with issues of feeling like we're manifesting, of writing down affirmations, of praying about it, about being in the energy, about manifesting, and then writing down that date of when we're supposed to have manifested this thing, get to that date and then realize that it just didn't happen, like at all. And then you're sitting there thinking, oh my God, did I not do something right? Did I write the affirmation wrong? Oh my God, maybe I just wasn't, I wasn't dedicated enough to this, right? Or um, I wasn't focused enough, or I didn't meditate enough, or I wasn't in the now and the present enough. There's like all these things that you start thinking about in regards to why you're doing it wrong. And so I wanted to offer up a different perspective that would hopefully bring some clarity to some of you in terms of what else that you can do in order to try to fix it. The one thing with manifesting, you know, you can go into this whole thing about, oh, say it as if it's already happened. But the idea is if you don't either A, believe it yourself, or maybe you do believe it, but you have created all of these obstacles and barriers for yourself prior to actually having whatever it is happen, then you are going to experience some resistance when it comes to manifesting what it is that you want. A lot of us don't realize that there is actually a formula for manifesting things. And this formula is channeled. It's not my formula. I didn't come up with it. It was actually given to me. And the formula for manifesting is me equals. Me equals whatever that thing is that you want to have. A lot of times what we do, let's say we want money, X amount, whatever, we'll say to ourselves, okay, I really want money. How do I get it? Well, maybe I need a different job or maybe it's this job. Maybe I should get promoted. Okay, how do I get promoted? I need to work harder. I'm gonna go to my boss and then ask my boss for some tips to figure out how I can work harder in order to get a raise or in order to get a promotion. That's what I need to do. I need to work harder. I need to do more. There's something else I need to do, right? And so you have effectively created this formula where it's like me equals job plus promotion plus working really hard plus getting help from my boss and you have created this really really long formula the problem with formulas is that in order to solve the equation you have to be able to cancel shit out and when you make a formula that that is that long you will have a hard time canceling shit out because first you got to figure out how to cancel out the job. Now you have to figure out how to cancel out the rate, the raise or the promotion. And the only way to cancel it out is by getting either the raise or promotion. You need to figure out how to get, how to cancel out support from your boss, right? What if you don't actually get support from your boss? You need to figure out how to, how to cancel out hard work. And here's the problem with hard work. Hard work is so subjective. You may feel like you've worked really hard for two or three days. Maybe the fourth day you're kind of sick. And so you can't put in as much work as you would appreciate putting in. And then you're like, ah, I could have worked harder. And the moment you say, I could have worked harder is the moment it no longer cancels out and this equation that you have created for yourself. 
And so when I was talking to Spirit and Spirit gave me the formula and I asked, well, what do you do? Spirit said, well, when you're writing the formula, don't make it so long that it requires you to cancel shit out. You're the one that's writing the formula. Why would you write it so long and make it so difficult when you're the one writing it? Where you can just write the formula in a way that's already solved, which is simply me equals that thing that you want. Me equals money. Everything is energy. Everything is vibration. You are energy. So is whatever it is that you want. So all you have to do is decide that that energy is now matching that energy. Me equals whatever the energy of the thing is that you're actually trying to get. Me equals money. Me equals job. Me equals house. Me equals car, right? Like whatever it is that you're trying to get. And then the next step about it is that you have to be so unbelievably entitled to it that it disgusts the people that are around you. Because one thing about manifestation is that you have to, you have to know without a shadow of a doubt that it is yours. Now you may not know how you're getting it. You may not know how you're getting there or how it's coming to you, but you need to know without a shadow of a doubt that it actually is yours. Think about things that you have manifested over life or things that maybe you manifested when you were a kid, right? Because as a child, it's very easy to manifest as a child because you don't have all of those like preconceived notions or judgments that come with living on earth for an extended period of time. You're still sort of pure and you're still sort of clean. And so when you're a child, you just have imagination and an excitement for possibility, which is something that you lose as you get older. But when you're a child and you manifest things, to you, it's just you said you wanted it and then it showed up. And then maybe it was a toy. It could have been a Barbie, whatever. But you thought it. You said you wanted it to yourself. Regardless of how it actually got to you, it just showed up. But the thing is, when you're a kid, kids are incredibly entitled to human beings. Entitlement starts to die back as society gets its hands on you and starts smacking you around and then telling you that humility is the thing and the way to go, which is not actually something that I agree with. I actually don't agree with the fact that people should be humble, but like that's probably for another video. Um, but when that starts to happen, it starts to reprogram you. It starts to reprogram your thoughts and reprogram how you're going about things. But if you had the same level of audacity when you were a kid or when you were a teenager, Think about just how far you would actually be today if you moved and acted with the level of audacity that you had at that time, right? When you are manifesting, you, manifesting, you need entitlement. When you are manifesting, you need entitlement. You need dumb, stupid, arrogant, perhaps a little bit ignorant, annoying levels of entitlement. It just is yours because you say it's yours. And you need to take that entitlement and you need to pair that shit with audacity. And it's then when that stuff that you wanted to have becomes yours. Whenever you start playing this game of like, oh, I gotta be humble, is when you start messing things up and you're not manifesting what it is that you wanna manifest. And I'm gonna give you guys another example. Let's say you want a car, right? Let's say you wanted a new car, current model, right? Or current year. And let's say maybe you wanted a Range Rover or a BMW, an Audi, a Mercedes, whatever it is that you said you wanted, right? Let's say your current car is a Toyota. Nothing wrong with a Toyota. Toyotas are, Toyotas are incredibly cost efficient and effective and they last forever, right? But let's say you have a Toyota. And let's say every month when your car note is due, you have a little moment of worry or panic because, damn, I got to pay this car note, right? Now, you're probably paying it every month, regardless of how you figured it out, regardless of how the money came to you in order to, to pay the car note, you're figuring it out. You're getting it paid once a month, right? But every once in a while, you're driving on a highway and you see that really nice car that you want, you'd be like, ah, oh, man, man, it'd be really nice to have that. Why do you think you're going to end up with that really nice car when you are panicking over paying for a Toyota. Nice cars 
cost money. They are expensive. You have to pay for them. And if you are so worried about the car note payment that comes with the Toyota, how the hell are you going to end up in a Range Rover? You want that house, that five bedroom house? You want a home office, a den, a pool in the back? You go, oh man, that'd be nice. But right now you're paying for a one bedroom apartment and you're scared. How the hell are you supposed to end up in that house when you are scared about a one bedroom apartment? Because money, guess what, is expensive. Things, guess what, is expensive. It takes money to make money. Scared money, don't make no money. Literally every saying that you can come up with is there for a reason. Because the more you have, the more it costs, the more expensive life gets. And there's nothing wrong with that right? But if that's the case, you need to not be so afraid of what it is that you have now. So if you are making that car payment, regardless of what kind of payment it is on whatever kind of car it is, every time you manage to make that payment, you need to say, yes, I have plenty. Yes, I paid it because I have plenty. And you need to get into that mindset of every time you pay for something, you paid for it because you have plenty. Right. And that is how plenty comes to you. If every time you pay for something, you're like, "Ooh, I don't I don't really know about this. I don't really think I have enough. You can't be mad that like energy is attracting like energy, because one thing about money is that money likes to be spent. Money is energy. It knows that it's of value. And if people and it likes to go to people that are spending it. Right. You ever notice that there are people who some people don't even have jobs. And they always seem to have money. They always seem to have their needs taken care of. And you're looking at them like, I have no, like, what are you doing? You don't work. You didn't go to school. You don't do anything. But yet everything is being paid for. It's because they're spending it. Money likes to be spent. Money understands its value. That is what the actual energy is made for. It's made to be spent. It's made to be exchanged. It's made to be traded. That is what is there to do. And money goes where it knows it can actually do that, where it can fulfill its mission and its purpose. But if you're sitting over here being afraid of money because you don't want to spend it, why would money want to go to you if money knows that you're afraid? Why? I wouldn't want to go to you. Would you? And I would bet money on the fact that there is a number of you that have money blocks, right? Because there are four types of people. I'm going to tell you about those types of people, right? Picture yourself holding your bag, your purse, your wallet, whatever, right? With your stuff in it, your valuables in it. Maybe it's got your keys. Maybe it's got your wallet, your credit cards or whatever, right? Picture yourself going into a restaurant. You're meeting your friend for brunch. Where do you put your bag? Do you put your bag on top of the table? Do you put the bag on your lap? When you put the bag on your lap, are you holding it? Or do you put the bag on the floor? Because the one thing about money, wealth likes to be shown off. Wealth is flashy, right? People a lot of times say, oh, don't let people know what you have. And there's an element of truth to that because you don't want to go and start getting robbed, right? But the other part of that is that sometimes the people that are telling you that are the people that don't have it themselves. And so they're telling you not to show it because they're actually really hating on you and they just don't actually want to see it, right? And so sometimes what people do is that they will take their bag and they will put it under the table, right? That is a very subconscious way of concealing the wealth that you have. There are some people that put the bag right on top of the table, right? Here, for everyone to see, right? And think about not only where you put your bag, but also consider what kind of bag is it, right? Is it a bag that maybe has a little bit of a name brand to it, right? It's a known kind of bag. Is it one of those sort of generic bags? And think about what you do with the bag when it's more generic and it's not branded. It looks kind of like run-of-the-mill normal. And what you do with the bag when it is actually branded, right? Where do you put it? Is it something where you are subconsciously trying to hide and conceal your wealth? Wealth likes to be shown off. If you want more of it, you have to show the shit off because it likes, it's a value. It knows that it's a value. It wants to be flashy. People that actually have true wealth don't actually give a damn what you think about it, right? They're not, you don't see Jay-Z and Beyonce, the billionaire couple concealing their wealth because they don't want to hurt your feelings, right? People that have money just have money and they're very unapologetic about having money. 
and they are very entitled and that's how they get it. You have to be entitled to get the money. When Beyonce is over there signing her deals, you don't think she's like, run me my money. I need X amount of zeros because she feels entitled to it. And guess what happens? She gets it. But if you're sitting over there going, oh, well, you know, I don't really know how much money that you have. And, I, you know, I don't want to really put you in a bad place. And oh, <laughs> Of course, it's like skittish to get to you. If you're skittish dealing with money, if you don't know how to approach money and work with money as a boss, why would money want to work with you? I'm just saying. Think about this, too, when it comes to things like love. So many people try to manifest love. It's just a thing. We all do it. Right. And think about um, how you actually feel towards love. You may have written it down in your journal. You may have prayed to God, whatever, the heavens, whomever, please bring me somebody that is right for me, right? But have you been entitled in your approach to finding love? Have you been like, no, this is my list. And these are non-negotiables, actually. And if I find that you don't meet these things, then it's, an, it's a hell no for me. Because that's not typically what happens. A lot of times what happens is because the dating world is so difficult, you'll meet someone, maybe they do half the boxes, right? And so you go, oh, all right, well, let me let it go because I don't know if I'm going to meet someone else. And then you're like, I don't understand why this isn't working. Well, one, you, that's not actually what you asked for. You asked for something, which is why you had a list. And then you accepted something that actually wasn't what you asked for. And now you're trying to figure out why it's not working. You're also trying to figure out why you're not meeting anybody. And you're not meeting anybody because you're preoccupying your time with a thing that is not what you asked for versus allowing your energetic space to remain open enough in order to get what it is that you actually asked for. You have to be so unapologetic in what it is that you want. And it will come to you. That's really just it. There is no like far out, like magical reason as to why these things happen. You want it. So therefore it is because you have to understand that things have no meaning. Actually, if you really want to zoom out into the galactic being that you really are, you will see that things like our money here don't mean anything. Think about the amount of worlds that actually exist, the amount of civilizations and societies that exist in different planets, different galaxies, different universes. You think that our currency means something? It doesn't mean anything. And as soon as you start or you stop giving so much power away to a thing that doesn't mean anything without you, because money doesn't mean anything without you, because money can't be spent without you. Money needs you, right? So if you stop giving this thing power over you, then it will start to come to you. It would want to work with you. Money would like you because money knows that it's a value and it knows that it's supposed to be spent and scared money don't make no money. Okay. Now, why am I qualified to talk about this? Am I a millionaire? Not yet. But does the government rob me blind in taxes due to my bracket? Yes. So I feel like I have done this little dance and I started to figure it out and figure out how it works, not to mention all the channeling and spirit actually trying to explain to me specifically what actually is happening. You just have to decide that you want it and that's it. That's it. You decide that you want it and that's it and be so unapologetically entitled to whatever it is that you want. And then you write it down. And why are you writing it down? You're writing it down because you're taking it out of the quantum field and you're putting it in reality. Literally, literally, by writing it on paper, you have now created it. The only thing that's happening now is that you're just catching up to it in terms of on the timeline, right? But once you pluck it out of wherever you're plucking it out of from, and you put it on paper, it now exists. Now it's in your org field. And you have to allow yourself to let go of attachment and let go of judgment when it comes to specifically how it lands in your lap. Don't worry about how it lands in your lap. Just know that it will land in your lap and be cool with that. And then when it does land there, don't apologize to other people that it landed there. People who may look at you and be like, oh, I can't believe this person got this and they got that. When really, no, not only did you command it, you are entitled to it. That's your birthright. Why are you not allowed to experience everything this planet has to offer when you were incarnated here? There are no rules. It's a game. So play with it. Because it actually wants to be played with. And when you write it, people always say, write it as if it's already happened. 
write it as if it's already happened. And what I think happens is that people don't fully understand what that means, right? But they do it anyway because they're told to do it. Really what that is doing is putting it in your, into your current energy field. That's it. You're taking it out of the quantum field, wherever it is, wherever it exists. And when you write it in present moments, you're now plucking it and you're putting it in your energetic field at this particular moment, right? That is you becoming entitled to it, right? You need to be so entitled that you you let go of this idea of, well, I hope you ever like try to manifest something and you're like, well, you know, I don't know if it's really going to happen, but I really, you know, I hope it does. Get rid of that. It, we, nobody has time for that. First of all, it's very inefficient, right? Especially for manifestation purposes. And the universe didn't ask you all that, right? The universe isn't giving things out like a prize or a gift, right? There's no one in the clouds that's like handing out raffle tickets, right? And when we're thinking about manifestation, it's almost like this idea that we're thinking about this being that's outside of us, that's giving us things. And if we pray hard enough and they hear us hard enough, that they're going to give it to us. When that's literally not what it is. Everything exists as possibility. It's all sitting in the quantum field. Everything. It's all energy, as are you. That's it. And all you are doing is deciding what energies you do and you do not want to work with. That's it. And don't pass judgment on it. Don't feel like, oh, I'm going to need these extra set of skills in order to have that. Why do you need skills? We have seen world leaders dominate and they have zero skills. Why do you need that? You don't need that. You just have to have entitlement. That's it. And you say what you want and that's it. And it's not up for discussion. It's not up for debate. It's not up for a negotiation. This is what it is. That is what I want. So that is what it's going to be. And that's it. So I'm hot. It's getting really hot in this room. I have very passionately yelled at all of you with love. But I really do sincerely hope that that gives you an other idea of how you can actually go about getting the things that you want. The answer has always been me equals. It's already solved. That's it. Don't make it more complicated than what it needs to be. That's going to bring me to the end of this video. As always, if you like what you see, subscribe to this channel and I'll see you soon.